Hi, you've tuned into a conversation about Susumaniello, the rare red grape grown in Puglia in the south of Italy. I'm Paul Caputo, wine writer and critic, and I'm joined today by some people who are really, really passionate about this variety. Uh, we talk about its history, about how it behaves in the vineyard and in the cellar, and about what the market might be like for it in the future. Um, the sound quality does dip in and out a little bit in places, but I think hopefully you'll get plenty of, of value from, from this video and from this conversation. Um, here we go. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to the first Vinerandum um, video discussion about one of Italy's rare but interesting grape varieties, Susumaniello from Puglia. Um, we have a couple of guests here with us today. We've got Massimiliano Apollonio from uh, Vini Apollonio, one of Puglia and Italy's uh, oldest wineries. Um, we have Alfredo Falvo from Masseria Livelli. And we have Ole Utsun, who is a importer based in Denmark. And we possibly also will have a later arrival from Romina Leopardi from Tenuta Rubino. Um, so thank you, everyone, for, for being part of this. Um, you'll have to bear with me on the technology. Hopefully it will hold up. Um, but really what I wanted to do today was just um, have a nice informal chat about Susan Maniero and, um, you know, really... What it can do, what it was doing, what it what it may well do in the future. Um, uh, perhaps um, you know, if if each of you want to sort of just briefly introduce your 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 winery or your or Ola, your role, um, that that would be a great start. Massimiliano, do you want to start? Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, I'm Massimiliano Polonia. I'm the winemaker of the winery. The winery is born in 1870. So this year is a one century and a half old story. It's not very, <laughs> very good for us because uh, this year was a preview, very party, big party. But in this moment, it's very complicated. Yeah, um, our company is in uh, inside the Copertino Doc, the, the house, mother house is in Copertino Doc. Uh, but uh, we, we produce not only Negramaro, but uh, Primitivo, also Susumaniello. However, all, all, always our job was to produce, uh, to try to produce very good wine from uh, indigenous variety from Puglia. Because you consider that in Puglia, that uh, we have around 100 indigenous varieties. It's very, uh, it's very important to Puglia. And, the, and another important thing is that in Puglia, the, the grape are present since uh, always 3,000 years ago. So it means that uh, uh, in Puglia we are the, 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 the father of the, of the famous grape that uh, are present. Uh, I don't know, the, the, the famous Sangiovese, for example, is the son of Negro Dolce and Ciliegiolo, that are two, two, two grapes from Puglia. It's very richness that we have in Puglia. And Susumaniello probably in this moment is the, uh, our uh, uh, best uh, arm that uh, Puglia uh, know, especially out of Italy. Marvelous. And, uh, Alfredo, a little bit about your winery? Yeah, Masseria Livelli also, it's, uh, it's located uh, uh, quite close to the winery of the Apollonio family. We are like uh, 15 minutes driving north uh, of Lecce. We are located between uh, Brindisi and, and Lecce, so in the area of Salento, the southern part of Puglia. And, uh, well, my family is, uh, is from Tuscany, actually. Uh, we also have quite a number of years in the tradition of winemaking uh, up in Tuscany, especially in the, in the Vino Nobile di Montepulciano area. And uh, it was, uh, well, my brother and, and myself, uh, we started this project uh, about 12 years ago, in 2008, uh, because we, we really liked the, the idea of uh, starting something where, let's say there was, uh, we like perceived there was a huge potential here because of, uh, climate of Puglia, because of indigenous grapes of Puglia. So while in Tuscany it was mostly done all around Sangiovese and its different clones, uh, like uh, Sangiovese Grosso and Montalcino, the Prugnolo Gentile and Montepulciano, 
and uh, Morellino in close by the, the sea. Uh, here there are a number of uh, indigenous grapes, uh, uh, much more. And at the same time, all these grapes are quite different one each other. So this is also very, very interesting from, uh, from a winemaking point of view. Uh, and Susumaniello, it's among, the, of course, the, the more popular indigenous grapes, just like uh, Negramaro or Primitivo, which are also uh, quite different one each other. Susumaniello is the third one that really uh, goes out of, uh, of these other two totally. So as, uh, as also Massimiliano was saying, this is, uh, I think, uh, one of the uh, best uh, uh, way that uh, we have in terms of uh, winemaking to uh, keep on uh, doing the very nice work. I think that Puglia has been done in, in the last uh, uh, 20 years as uh, we were chatting uh, minutes before. Uh, and probably Susumaniello represents the, the next steps because as is, is, is still a grape that is not very well known. There's not that much quantity and definitely it can be picked up to, to make some very nice project about uh, more quality driven and uh, more kind of a niche project. And uh, it can be really a great great vehicle to, to put uh, Puglia where uh, all, all us producer, we would like to be. So in a, in a perception of more kind of a quality production area. Uh -huh. and, and just just so we have a sort of a uh, vague idea of, of where your wineries kind of stand in terms of production. You you, you mentioned you produce around 60,000 bottles a year of Susumaniello in yeah. Rosso. Of uh, Rosso, yeah, and about 10,000 of Rosé. Uh -huh. uh, and Massimiliano, you're at? Um, yeah, a, a, a little more, especially of Rosé. Okay. And uh, Romina, welcome. Sorry. sorry. Hello. Hello, everybody. Maybe Mr. Ciao, Alfredo. Ciao, Massimiliano. Hello, Hello, Ole. Ciao. Hello. So, R Romina, how, how many bottles a year of Susman and Yellow do you produce yourself? Tanita uh, Rubina? Uh, well, altogether, you mean uh, we have about uh, five labels for five different interpretations of Susumaniello. Uh -huh. And so, it, you know, it's it's different. The production is different, uh, bottle, you know, bottle to bottle. Uh -huh. So, uh, we make about 12,000 bottles out of our Torre Testa crew, is our top Susumaniello, and about 40,000 bottles for the unoaked version, uh, another 5,000 bottles for the Rosato, and uh, around two, 3,000 bottles for the classic method. Uh -huh. Okay, so it, it's, um, it's, a, it's a decent size investment in the variety, because I think many people perhaps think that Susumaniello um, is this kind of old blending grape that maybe just because um, you know rare and almost extinct varieties are now trendy that there's you know there's a there's worth um, putting a little bit of bit more effort into into getting it known. But actually, you know that that's that's quite a commitment. You know, I think. Ola, you you. Um, well, yes. So why don't we let Romina introduce uh, herself and her winery? Absolutely. Romina, go ahead. Okay. Yes, sure, sure, sure. So I'm responsible for the marketing of uh, our family business. Uh, the name of our company is Tute Rubino, and we are based in in the Salento area, in the long region, and we are towards, you know, down south. And uh, we are in Brindisi, that is a small town facing the Adriatic Sea. We have uh, five different estates and uh, we work mainly with the local varieties such as Primitivo, Negramaro, Malvasianera and Susumaniello. And whereas uh, all these varieties are, you can find them in each of the single estates, the, Sus the Susumaniello is planted only in one of them, that is the Yadiko estate, and it is the one that is fa that faces the Adriatic Sea. It's 200 meters from the sea. So you can find Primitivo, you can find Negramado in all of our five estates, but you can find Susumaniello only in that one. Can you hear me? I can't hear you any longer. Romina, I think yeah, I just yes. needed interference there. 
Yeah, you were breaking up a little bit, Romina. Ola, you have um, you import Susaman Yellow. Is that yeah. Right? So a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been writing about Italian wine for 25 years. Um, and I specialized, I think you can probably say, in southern Italian wine. Been traveling in Puglia for many, many years. Uh, yeah, met everyone here and, and, um, and essentially uh, have fallen totally in love with Puglia. And totally in love with, uh, uh, with Susumaniello from the first time I met it. Uh, I think the first time I ever tasted Susumaniello was in 2000 when I tasted the first test bottles that uh, Gregorio Perucci was making. The one he's still making that's called Sum. Uh, and I think it had something special from the very beginning. So I've been following uh, Susumaniello for many years now. And uh, and I do import uh, Susumaniello as well, yes. Uh -huh. And so uh, what brought you, how did you arrive at um, making a commercial decision on, on Susumaniello? Do you obviously yeah. feel the quality from what you tasted was, was high enough? It wasn't just a decision based on it being a rare variety? Uh, you're talking about my, you know, my choice of importing Susumaniello? Yeah. Uh, absolutely based on quality. I mean, I, unfortunately, I don't import any of the wines from uh, any of the participants here today, although they're all, all very good. But uh, the producer that I do import is, is the one that apparently has not been able to join today. Um, uh, and she, I believe, was the first to make a rosé, uh, Susumaniello, uh, which I think is very, very successful. I mean, in how uh, it expresses the grape variety. And she's now also making a red Susumaniello. And I just love the style of her Susumaniello. It's very, very juicy, fresh. Uh, it's got sort of a saline quality as well that I really love. That you will often find in Susumaniello, I have to say. It's not just her. Sorry, sorry, Paul. Uh, you consider that the old name of Susumaniello was uh, Lacrima di Puglia, no? Yeah. Or it, that was one of the best grapes to produce rosé because you know uh, better of me that uh, Puglia is the, the, the house, no? Or one of the house of the rosé. And yeah. so, for this way, that the Susumaniello is very successful to produce rosé. In this moment, probably one of the, the most requests that we have, uh, especially out of Italy. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so and what what Massimiliano is saying is of course true. Uh, Puglia is one of the places where they have been making rosé always. It is yeah. a tradition in Puglia. It is not something they have invented just because some people in Provence had success yeah. with it. They've always been doing it, uh, and and the method was lacrima. That's yeah. that a few are still using. Um, uh, uh, a very high quality but low yield method. So, uh, so yes, yeah. no, Susumaniello is extremely well suited to making rosé wines and red wines. Yeah, also because you consider that in Puglia and especially in Salento in the south of Puglia is very famous. The rosé is also because it's very good with our food. And so, yeah. uh, of course, uh, the, the, the rosé was always for the local consumption, uh, while the red was always the wine to export, you know, for the out of Italy. Uh, because, um, for example, for us, the rosé, it was called the rosé, the, the wine of one night, you know, because normally it stays just for uh, 12 hours or 10 hours. Uh, so it's also a very romantic name, you know, but it was really the, 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 the reality that was for my father, for example, that the best grip was for to produce rosé or for my grandfather. He never uh, think to, to put the best grape to produce red wine. The best grape was always uh, to produce rosé. Of course, Negramaro, but because Negramaro is very high acidity, but uh, also the, uh, the success of Susmanello is always because uh, it's very full of antociani. Uh, it's very the color is very deep, uh, very violet. You know that you know in every part in the world like this uh, typology of color. And also because it's very uh, fresh, very uh, not easy, very uh, mineral. After we have uh, like Romina said before, you no, know, we have the sea that is very close, 
and the min minerality that we are able to produce in the Sussumaniello Rosé is very unique, maybe, uh, really in the world of uh, the Rosé. I think it, I think it's important to say, isn't it, that well, the consumption of of Rosati. Yeah. So Sumaniello is a is a great variety that has traditionally always been valued for its ability to give colour. Um, mm -hmm. Quite often planted with um, with oh, yeah. and with uh, you know with Negramaro and so um, with Negramaro, yeah. Ottavianello. Yes, and Ottavianello as well, which is Chinso. Um, yeah, with, with the rest of the world. But um, uh, Romina, do do you see uh, this well, that was variety's the potential uh, in the past? Do you see this variety's potential more um, geared towards rosé wines, or do you or do you feel that it's primarily suited to red wine production? Well, actually, this is the incredible thing that we discovered in time by studying Susumaniello. Uh, so you must know that we have been studying Susumaniello since uh, the winery was founded in 1999. So apart from, you know, grapes, there was nobody knew much about Susumaniello and uh, we, we, we didn't either we didn't know much since then actually so since 1999 we have never stopped studying Susumaniello and it's been one surprise after the other our very first Susumaniello was our crew uh, the, the the you know highly fully bodied highly structured Susumaniello red very intense and colored and so since 1999 what? up to our days in we are two, in 2020 uh, we have uh, uh, discovered that the Susumaniello grape is actually very so very versatile and so we can have uh, Anoked versions and Rosati and uh, last but not least the classic method and it was a surprise for us as well I mean we had to observe it in time and uh, study its evolution and this was a surprise for us so when you ask me uh, what is it best for I cannot I can't actually answer I mean perhaps traditionally you know the best expression uh, the most powerful expression of Susumaniello is when it's, you know, uh, matured in, uh, uh, in wood, uh, such as our crew. But um, the numbers say, our numbers at least, our most popular is the unoaked version, so a much fresher, easy to drink wine, but it tells a lot about typicity, it tells a lot about the soil and the terroir where it, uh, where it comes from, perhaps because, uh, also because it has, you know, a good value, uh, it's a good value wine, I'm, I'm talking about the uh, unoaked version, and so it's a more democratic wine, I would say, and everyone can approach it versatile with this, with the pairings, and that's why it became more and more popular. Now, as Massimiliano said, um, our consumption, you know, of, of Aspugliesi, of Rosato, is much different from other uh, parts of the world. Rosato is not only summer, it's not only spring, it's not only barbecues. Rosato is an everyday wine throughout the whole year. And uh, and this is, this is why it's, I mean, are so popular and we have all sorts of rosati. The most popular ones obviously are the, the ones that the whole world knows are the ones coming from especially from Negramaro but you know in search of new varietals uh, certainly I mean Susumaniello fits really well. Mm -hmm. Alfredo do you, have, do you have, have some thoughts? I'm going to come to Massimiliano in a, in a second because I know he has strong views on the use of wood uh, an oak, but um, I'm going to Alfredo. Do you have some thoughts? I haven't, unfortunately. Yeah, had yeah we've been, uh, I mean, we have also been uh, kind of discovering uh, Susumaniello just, uh, uh, you know, as an occasion. Uh, it was in part of the vineyards that uh, we started working with when we uh, when we started uh, the whole project of Masseria Livelli in 2008, and uh, it really started um, together with uh, with the Verdeca uh for us as a very niche uh, project 
Uh, at the time, we used to make uh, first vintage was 2009 of both. And uh, we did like 5,000 bottles each. So it really started as a, as a small niche project. Uh, the nice thing was that, uh, of course, being uh, uh, our family, probably one of the, the latest, I mean, to be in the market in Puglia. Um, of course, when we started promoting our wines, all the importers, all the customers, they were already working with some Negramaro or Primitivo. So it was nice to see how probably the, the first wines that uh, we were known for were more the, these two, these two little or small productions like mm -hmm. Verdeca and Sosumaniello. So these, these were like our, how can I say, our Arieti, you know, that uh, helps us to break in the market. And, and then, you know, they, they help uh, the, the rest of our, of our range to, to develop. And then, of course, even us, we started replanting new vineyards. So nowadays, as I was saying, we are producing a little bit larger uh, amount of, uh, of bottles because uh, we are keeping the older vines to produce the, the Asco Susumaniello, which is our uh, medium high range of grape. And then two years ago, or three years ago, we started with the kind of more an entry level red with uh, stainless steel fermentation and just uh, six months in oak. And two years ago, we started with Rosé as we were having uh, um, more younger vine st uh, starting to produce. So it, it, we used the, the, the fruit coming from these vines to, to produce the, the Rosé. And it's still, I mean, it's, it's very interesting even for us as, as it's something that we are really seeing now. I mean, uh, just uh, being so such a few years that we started working with this grape. I mean, the, how it's... Um, uh it's it's the grape is behaving with the rosé or, or how it's behaving with the uh different uh aging the oak aging i mean we're just discovering now and but i think the response is very positive and and very very interesting fabulous similiano yeah. you i want to say you paul all the all the name of susumaniello if you want but i, I need to read <laughs> Paniello <laughs> is Susi Paniello, Cucci Paniello, Cozzo Maniello, Gris Maniello, Suso Maniello, Susu Mariello, Susu Mariello Nero, Zingariello, Zuzu Maniello. The name of maybe you know already. Susu and Maniello. Somarello and Somarello and Uva della Marina. Yeah, exactly. This is precisely what the consumer yeah, wants. Because, yeah, but it, because for many and many years the Susmaniello was uh, a very good grape to to help the producer, no? Because before they produce many quantity for hectare. Uh, for this way, the people need the donkey to put the grape upstairs, and uh, it was also another name. Susmaniello was uh, I, I don't know you say in English paga debiti. Yeah, yeah, because uh, for many, many years, the, the, the people use the, the, the powerful of Susumaniello to help uh, all the, the other grape. Uh, now, of course, we have the lucky to, to produce alone the Susumaniello, and so when you see during the fermentation, uh, during the aging, the aging, you can understand really the powerful because we are, we have a speak of Susumaniello Rosé but of course that uh, probably uh, in my opinion the best uh, way to produce uh, Susumaniello is red because the, the color is very really violet that is uh, it, it's like a Montepulciano but it's better of Montepulciano in my opinion because it's very it's very uh, I, I love Montepulciano uh, but the Susmaniello is very particular because it's very powerful yeah probably our Alfredo say we maybe uh, we don't ever finish the uh, the experiment uh, the experiment no we need to understand really because about the Negromaro Primitivo yes we have study we have uh, many teacher that uh, we, we explain about this Susumaniello uh, maybe because we are not too many producers to produce the Susumaniello uh, actually we don't have uh, many many uh, uh, book that speak about the Susumaniello in fact we have to speak also with the University of Salento that now there is to 
the, the, the course of university of uh, enology that uh, to the teacher if uh, can uh, it's possible to improve the the, the, the study about the susumaniello because uh, uh, me but not only me alfredo romina luigi all the other producers we believe uh, uh, really uh, really too much in the, the in the powerful of susumaniello i think in this moment uh, we don't have uh, co uh, how you say scoperto uh, less of uh, the 50 percent uh, of the potential of the susmanial it is difficult to work but uh, when, when uh, the, the, if the harvest is good and uh, everything is good we are able to produce very very interesting wine maybe also not only powerful but also elegant wine mm -hmm. so is one of the challenges yes. that um is one of the challenges that um, many of the the varieties that are starting to really put Puglia on the map for uh, high quality um, wine production are is because the, the the vineyards are actually quite old. Um, whereas Susumaniello, you don't necessarily have that benefit, and you're now kind of starting again, almost planting new vines. You know, and from what I understand. Um, you know, it, it's quite productive as, as offspring of Garganaga. It's quite productive in, in, in youth, needs about 10 years, 15 years before it starts to yes. really give yeah. nice Decrease. contents and flavors. Um, it's as always in, in wine, it's a game of patience, I suppose. Can I just say something about that? Absolutely. Uh, the, the way I understand it, uh, Susumaniello is very, very vigorous when it is young. It is, uh, yes. And, and, and tends to produce a lot. Uh, and uh, it is a weaker wine than when the vine becomes older and starts settling yes, down and yes. starts producing, you know, higher uh, concentration, etc. Which is why I think it's really, really interesting that people have mostly attacked Susumaniello from the red wine area and come into the rosé afterwards rather than starting with the rosé, right? Because you would almost think that you would start with the rosé with the young vineyards and then move into the red wines. But certainly, I mean, uh, uh, the first the first Susumaniello I ever tasted was a red, and it was quite a long time before there was anyone that was putting bottles of rosé on the market. So it's it's very much a journey of discovery. This is because may, may I say something about it? This is a story, Paul. Can you uh -huh. hear me? I can, yes. Okay, this is a, this is the right story of Susumaniello, actually, and what, this was the reason why it was abandoned in the past. I mean, in the mentality of the old farmers, um, you know, when when a vine is very productive and big. Vigorous, you know, in that mentality, that was the mentality of quantity rather than quality. Um, so Susumaniello fitted perfectly. But as it gets older, it decreases its production. And this was the reason why it was just left. Now it's, you know, it's topsy turvy right now. It's exactly the opposite. I mean, less it produces and the better quality you get from it. And uh, well, that was right, Ole. Uh, I think the first uh, wines that come from Susumaniello uh, are those highly, uh, you know, structured uh, red ones because they came from bush vines. So the older implants yeah. of Susumaniello. Mm. It's without a generation, you know, and with the new implants that, you know, uh, and the younger ones that we started the production of Rosé. But our Torre Testa, for instance, comes from the bush vines of Susumaniello. And the very first plot of Susumaniello was found in one in the Attico estate, and it was a 75-year-old plot of so bush vines that's where our top red comes from yeah okay okay interesting so uh alfredo you um when did you plant your your vineyards the one that we have it's uh let's say out of the production uh about 30 percent it's from 2000 has been planted in 2000 and uh, the rest has been planted between 2011 and 2013. So it's relatively recent. 
it's not that okay. old. And so you, you're obviously your your winery is based in um, in Provincia di Brindisi. So we're yeah, right. you know we're what what sort of altitude are, are you? Presumably, yeah, pretty, pretty yeah, high. 20, 30 meters above sea level. Yeah, okay. sea level. Yeah, and so are, are you are you struggling with any kind of viticultural challenges with this variety that maybe you've noticed? Nothing to be so I mean important. The, the thing is, uh, it's mostly that, uh, you know, being such a different uh, grape uh, compared to the other, it's a later, later harvest, later maturity. Um, and the fact that, uh, I mean, it's uh, from the first time that you taste it, even before it's wine, I mean, it's totally different. You, you understand it's something totally different. So it's, it's definitely... Uh, we 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 felt that was definitely worth the uh, try to do something uh, on its own. Um, being a blending varietal, because sometimes, as, as I was saying before, um, the great thing about Puglia is that you have a number of indigenous grapes, but very different one each other. If I can make some some examples for the experience we had up in Tuscany, um, in, uh, in most of the disciplinari, you not know, most of the DOCs or DOCGs. You blend Sangiovese with other uh, indigenous grapes that are like Canaiolo, like uh, Mammolo, like Ciliagiolo, and so on. But uh, yeah, they, this, this kind of grape, uh, they're not so structured, they're not so complex compared to Sangiovese, but from a certain point of view, the, the final taste is, is more or less not that different. While for the, for the Susu Maniello, it is. So this is the most interesting thing. I mean, it is a blending varietal that used to be blended with the, 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 the higher percentage of Negromaro or Primitivo. But it's something that if you took it on its own, it's, it's totally different compared to the other. So it's, it's, a, it's a different, diff, totally different approach from a, from a viticultural point of view, from an analogical point of view. And on the other end, what we are seeing from our customers or our consumers is that most of the times, so if you ask someone to close his eyes and drink Susu Maniello without knowing it's Susu Maniello or without knowing the bottle, would be impossible to say that uh, it's, it comes from the same area, from, from the same plot of uh, you know, the other wine that is, is, is a Primitivo mm -hmm. or Negramaro, something that tastes completely different because these wines are more full body, while Susu Maniello is more, it's a lighter body, it's, it's more elegant, it's more into perfumes, it's more into acidity. So this is also, I think, that it's an indigenous, what people like the most. So it's an indigenous grape. It's even more local because you have Negramara and Primitivos that are spread throughout all Puglia, while Susu Maniel, as we were saying, is something that really grows in a, in a very short little stripe of land from Ionian to, to the Adriatic and say from Ostuni, where it, already in Ostuni has a different name, and to the Lecce or, or south of Lecce. And uh, the nice thing is that you can really play with this grape, meaning that you can spread it out and having uh, people, consumers, wine lovers, try this wine and being surprised because it's, it's something that is outstanding compared to the other indigenous grape. And it's a niche, and uh, so it's, it's very, very interesting. But back to your question, with all the technologies that we have now, with all the, you know, the, the, the knowledge of course, that we have now for, for wine making and, and wine growing. Um, it's nothing that uh, requires any extra attention of, or care uh, compared to, to other grapes as, uh, as we have here in, uh, in Puglia. I mean, the, of course, then any, any vintage has its own story, but uh, as a standard base, I mean, it's uh, are more, more, uh, much, much more the ups, I would say, than, than the downs, of course. Uh -huh. So the, the the key is is as always in the vineyard rather than necessarily in the in the cellar. Um, so where so do you guys all export um, to various places? Are you are you seeing big demand? I mean, I appreciate everything is somewhat on hold at the moment, but but generally, are you seeing rising demand from your customers for this variety? If I can answer first, yeah, we were. There's a lot of uh, interest in this in this kind of grape, and uh, as Masseria Livelli, we export like seventy percent of the production. And uh, even if the domestic market is is growing a lot for us, 
but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something that uh, like grapes like Susumaniello or other indigenous less known grapes are having uh, uh, every time growing, uh, you know, interest and, uh, and curiosity yeah. from. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I confirm totally what Alfredo has just said. Uh, also, Tenute Rubino exports 70% uh, of its uh, production. And uh, Susumaniello really meets the interest especially of young consumers, I would say, of younger consumers, you know, who are in search of something new, um, something, they're very curious, actually. And, and that, you know, Susumaniello fits really well there. And um, they are looking for native, um, um, native um, grapes and uh, that they have a story behind them. And it's not only, you know, drinking something, something different and hopefully something good, but it's something that has a story behind. And when it tells the story of a particular area and, and if you add to that the story of a family, of the producers, or uh, it, it's done, I would say. It's just, you know, time of, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, uh, talking about it and promoting it because it has everything uh, a, a younger consumer needs and is asking for. Yeah. In fact, uh, Paul, I, I, I have seen that also, especially in the Asia market, also Apollonia, of course, uh, like uh, Livelli, uh, Rubin, you know, we are really focused on uh, export, maybe also more, uh, 90%. But I have seen that, for example, the last year was uh, many times in China and, uh, and uh, Japan, you know, in, uh, in, in, in Asia in general. I have seen that, uh, especially, the, 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 especially the China, you know, the, the new market is very interesting in Susumaniello because, like Romina said, that uh, uh, not that it is easy to, to, to drink, but uh, it's very, um, it's very uh, easy for the new market to understand the wine. That sometimes we have a, a problem, for example, I don't know, for the elegance of Negramaro, for example, it's difficult to know that the people understand uh, the, the rustic of the Primitivo. And uh, for Susmaniello, maybe, is the more uh, um, International, uh, uh, good word uh, that uh, of grape that we have because the elegance maybe is uh, like uh, Alfredo said before is superior to the uh, to the powerful uh, is like uh, we have uh, international variety but uh, called Susumaniello and uh, it is just from Salento. Uh, uh, yeah, that tempo that you have for us is very important because we have. Uh, and 100 and half uh, years of life uh, and uh, we decided for example to put to, to on uh, Susumaniello because we believe uh, very much uh, in uh, in this grape uh, Japan is now in this moment is very open uh, to understand the Susumaniello but not only also in the uh, USA I think Romina is very very good market for them uh, in the uh, USA for Susumaniello but also in Europe uh, in Italy, of course, Alfredo said before, uh, because the people uh, approach very, uh, very good because um, the, the people are really is change because uh, some years ago the, the, the people uh, not that not like the Puglia, but they don't understand very good the Puglia. Now the the, the producer, especially the new generation that uh, and that travel too much, uh, they, they want. Uh, make to understand that the Puglia is uh, like, uh, how you say, an open mine, no? We are full of, of, of gold in Puglia and uh, we, we are just able to, to speak good to the people and for this we say thanks to Paul and to all uh, for all uh, what you do about the wine from Puglia, from Salento. That is very important for us because maybe we have too much indigenous variety. And so it's very complicated to, to, to explain, especially in the Asian market, uh, what is our characteristics. You can never have too many <laughs> local varieties. Well, I think that maybe leads us to quite a nice question 
perhaps to close on, which is um, if if Susamaniello is a variety that the producers in Puglia really believe in, that we that we know from the tastings that, that we've done, you know, it, it is a is a really strong uh, wine, both as a rosé and a red. How how do we find the balance between um, making sure that it becomes more accessible by by encouraging more people to plant it, but at the same time um, managing to keep uh, the large, uh, more industrial producers from um, trashing its its reputation? Because as we know, it's a variety that perhaps could lose some flavor if not treated properly. I, th I think that if you look at Susumaniello, one of the strengths of it is that, uh, you know, it functions extremely well as a rosé, great freshness, great morality, minerality, and a, and a lovely sort of uh, uh, fruitiness with a bit of a fl a florality on it as well. But if you look at the red wine, it is the antithesis of what people think about Puglia, right? It has great fruity freshness, great acidity. Uh, it has uh, it has a very, very sort of bluish color, etc. It It is very different from if if you're sort of into wine you think Puglia makes cooked wine right you think it's all heavy negramaro primitivo and it's all raisins and prunes and all of that stuff which by the way is, is wrong absolutely and and the producers here today uh, can show you lots of wines that that will prove you wrong on that but if you look at Susumaniello, it just naturally goes towards that you know very dark color and great freshness and great fruitiness and I, do, I, I, I think it's going to be difficult to ruin that in the sense of, yes, if you're a bad winemaker, you're a bad winemaker, you ruin it, right? But even some of the big guys, I mean, Cantina Due Palme are making a, a, a Susumaniello. Uh, there's one question that we didn't actually get to discuss, which is oak or no oak on the red wines, but we can leave that for another day. Uh, it is a fairly heavily oak one, clearly made for the U.S. market, I think. But, but even a big producer such as uh, Dua Palma are making a very possible uh, Susumaniello. And I think Susumaniello lends itself well to quality winemaking. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. I think there's a lot of Susumaniello to come and there is a lot yet to be discovered about the grape variety. Mm -hmm. so, so just go for it, really. I mean, it really is a third string to the bow in, in the Salento in particular. I mean, in the north of Puglia, we have uh, Nero di Troia and so on. But in the Salento, Susumaniello is, is your third grape variety. And really interesting. And I would welcome that the big guys got into the game. They sort of already are. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you think about Cantina Dua Palma, I think they make three or four million bottles a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or more. Clearly, um, clearly yeah. a big, big player. Guys, closing comment? There are some pros and cons, you know. Susumaniello is um, an unknown grape. It's not popular, such as Primitivo around the world, such as Negramar around the world. And so in, in on one side, you know, that makes it... Um, particular and you know it, it's just the right grape for the people that are curious in looking for uh, that are in search of uh, different grapes on the other uh, on the other hand it makes uh, our job much more difficult because uh, we have to promote it and we have to uh, you know there is a big effort on our side at this moment but at the same time it, it, it's challenging but it's very nice because we've got something new to talk about something new to have people taste and personally i i find especially in the u.s market uh, you know it's really it's you know it meets the favors of a lot of consumers and also journalists and uh, uh, it really makes us happy a big effort but at the same time we're happy to Alfredo? Yeah, I mean, even, yeah, even for myself, what I think is that uh, we are still like on a kind of a prehistoric stage here with, with this grape. So as we were saying, it's still quite limited in terms of uh, quantities. So uh, definitely a larger like uh, critic mass of this grape, of course, without uh, putting it in uh, in uh, in a bad situation on, or in in a bad uh, you know position but definitely it would help so i mean more producers starting 
uh, producing uh, sesumaniello, having more vineyards planted, you would definitely have to 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 get this grape and this wine being more promoted, being uh, better known from uh, each part of uh, any part of the world. So definitely an increase in terms of uh, critic mass for for this grape and this wine is is so welcome because we're still at the very beginning of the history of this grape. So mm -hmm. definitely. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the same, uh, like Romina Alfredo say. Uh, I think uh, in the future, absolutely, that the, the Susumaniello will be the 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 the, the, the new pop star in uh, in uh, Salento uh, grape. Uh, absolutely, but not to, because the name, not for Apollonio, for Livelio, for Rubino, but because really the powerful of the grape because it's very interesting uh, especially for the winemaker it's very interesting to to to, to work with uh, this grape it also is yeah, is also a particular for us also because the the harvest is uh, uh, later than the other grape so we have the time to dedicated to, to this grape uh, i think it would for for our winemaker is very important this can I just say that uh, I love pronouncing difficult names, but Susumaniello. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you're right, Ale. You're right. This is one of the reasons why this is so successful because the people is so difficult to pronounce. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we just call it Susie. Okay, yeah. make it short. Susie. <laughs> Fabulous, guys! Thank you very much. It seems a great place to leave it. Um, thank you. Obviously, hopefully, we'll we'll push this around on the various channels and see if hopefully it will trigger some some comment and some um, some excitement around the variety. But uh, yeah, thank you once again, Ola, Alfredo, Mina. Thank you. Thank you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. That was a great chat about Susu Maniello. Um, certainly inspired me to get out into the vineyards and taste some more examples of this wine. Um, I'd like to say a big thank you to all our guests and of course to you guys, thank you for watching. Um, you can read more about Susu Maniello and other great varieties from Puglia and beyond on vinerandom.com. Um, thanks again, cheers. <laughs>